Let's watch a quick video here from Sal Altman about the Indian market for GPT-5. Uh, again, I labeled this slide the land grab. I want to talk about that, the idea that you know we have these companies going out to deliver capacity to nations at a time. We've seen this in the UAE. We've seen this in Saudi. We've seen this in other places. All right, let's listen to Sam here. India is now our second largest market in the world. Um, it may become our largest. We've taken a lot of feedback from users in India about what they'd like from us. Better support for languages, more affordable access, uh, and much more. And we've been able to put that into this model and upgrades to ChatGPT. Um, so we're committed to continuing to work on that. So India, 1.41 billion people, uh, you know, the vast majority, 80, 90 percent uh, in severe poverty, uh, half of those in squalor. It's a nation that needs AI more than anybody for health and education. Uh, and OpenAI wants to go there and give it to them. I'm going to link this article with the next one, uh, which is OpenAI in talks to provide GPT plus to the whole of the UK. This article on its own isn't critical, but here we have these, these companies going in and saying, hey, let's give your population, your school kids, your, you know, your factory workers, everybody access to our model. Um, and I do think it's it's sort of a land grab. What do you guys think? I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on this, guys. Uh, something is going on beyond just the cover story here. <laughs> I know it for a fact because you know, when we were at OpenAI, not this trip last week, but the prior one about five weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, why don't you guys open an office in Boston? We have like ten times more computer scientists in Boston than you, you have here in Silicon Valley. Incredible talent pool. And they said, well, not going to do that because AI, you know, strong AI is imminent. And this workforce is going to be all AIs. But then they go a couple of weeks later and open this huge new office in New Delhi. And you're like, okay, you skipped right over Boston and New York and went right to New Delhi. That's not coincidence. And if you look at the demographics of India, it's the biggest population in the world, just crossing China right now. But the age is right in that you know, 20 to 35 sweet spot is much bigger than any other country in the world. It's and the so youngest it also country in the world. Mercor is now at a $10 billion valuation, you know, the Brendan Foody story, which we can talk about if we have time. But, but Mercor is almost entirely operating in India now in terms of recruiting talent for the big AI companies. And so something beyond just the it's the biggest market in the world is definitely part of this plan. I'd love to hear. Uh, we were talking about overhangs, right? The intellectual overhang in India is unbelievable. Uh, I don't know if you know the story of the mathematician Ramanujan. Um, this is an obscure accountant in India 100 years ago, and they sent him to Cambridge, and he got a lot of racism, so he came back, died in obscurity. And then his widow handed in all his mathematical notes after he died, and they found that there's like seven problems in mathematics that have never been solved for like a thousand years, and he solved five of them. And, and so they've got teams of PhD students who are reverse engineering the notes now, trying to figure out how the hell did he do this. And this is uh, endemic across India. I think the bigger issue here is the infrastructure and energy and bandwidth and so on that need to be solved first because you're you're hitting people at the you know as you mentioned peter a large number of indians are below the poverty line right and so this will give them this has a double effect of allowing them to get out of that if you can get them the compute and infrastructure to uh, uh scaffold themselves out of there so the potential is unbelievable yeah i tend to uh to agree broadly that there are several, maybe two or three feedstocks to what we perhaps think of as global abundance and abundant intelligence or abundant superintelligence is arguably one of the most important inputs to Salim's point, our arguably abundant energy is another one of those feedstocks. If, if the world is just drowning in intelligence and energy, maybe materials query whether material scarcity just follows uh, or is, is resolved automatically with uh, energy and uh, intelligence post scarcity. I, I think everything else, all of these global abundance challenges that we speak of, I think all of these are downstream of of those those inputs, those feedstocks, and uh, and can be resolved uh, and mitigated much more easily. That that's one thought. the 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 other thought regarding UK specifically is this starts to look like a prime example uh, if if it were to come to fruition of what one might call um, universal basic compute (UBC). Uh, and UBC maybe call that a, a special case of larger class of approaches, universal basic services, 
uh, sort of the supply side uh, dual of universal basic income. And looks the future looks very interesting if if every every citizen of a country is automatically supplied with a basic level of compute. You know, I also think this is going back to your question, Dave, is this is an economic play. You know, if you can go in and get your software in as the basis to a billion people on the planet who are going to use your software to create more income for themselves and get a better life and then be able to pay for your software. I mean, you know, isn't this just an ability for them to, you know, I'm trying to find a good analogy without going to, to drugs and giving, you know, giving the school kid a taste of a drug just to make sure that they start to use it. I mean, this will become addictive to entrepreneurs and educators and healthcare workers and government workers over the next, you know, over the next few years. And the question is, if you start using open AI, chat GPT-5 and 6 and so on, would you switch or this become baseline for a billion people in India? 